All right, so before we get into any examples involving Newton's method, I want to first give a uh, illustration of the usefulness of it and let us see it on a graph before we're just dealing with x1, x2, x3 in equations because that can just be kind of confusing, I think. So uh, here we have a graph. This is a graph of a simple rational function, f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1, a simple function, not hard to graph. Um, but that's not what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do here is find this little point right here. Now we have two points, negative 1 and positive 1, that are zeros. But that doesn't help us at all. We need to find this little point right here. What is the value of this point? Well, we have no idea, so what we need to do is we need to take derivatives or take tangent lines. The definition of a derivative is the slope of a tangent line running up to a point on a function. So we need to take derivatives of points near this desired point, which will help us get at what this point is. Now, a note on Newton's method. While we can get really, 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 really close to this point, Newton's method is always just an approximation. It is not equal. It's just really close to being equal to the point that we're trying to get at. So when we, you see problems dealing with Newton's method, you, you'd be given an equation and it would say something like, take this, uh, find the value of this point uh, with this equation giving initial value x 1 equals 6 or 2 or, or whatever you have. It would just depend. So what x1 means is the first x-coordinate or the first point along the x-axis that you're taking the derivative of, of the function at that point. So let's erase this point of this 0 right here because that's not useful to us and it'll give us a little bit more room to work. So our x1 in this case is going to be right here, and this is, and the, the numbers don't matter for this because this is just an example on the graph to explain a concept. So this is our x1. It's this point. What we're doing mathematically when we do Newton's method is we're taking the derivative at that point. And so x1 hits the slope, uh, or hits the function, hits f of x at this point right here. So we take the derivative to that point. And the derivative probably looks something a little bit like this coming off. So this right here is f prime of x at x1, okay? So now that we have that tangent line, we're sort of close to this point, but we're not there yet. So we need to take x2. And so we say x2 is right here. And we're getting closer to the point, but now we're taking the derivative of the tangent line. We're taking the derivative of the function, or we could just say we're taking f double prime. So we go in, we take the derivative of this, and you know, our derivative, let's say it looks something like this, right? We're getting closer and closer and closer each time. As we take x3, it hits this derivative at this point. We take the derivative of that. And the directions of these lines aren't useful right here. It's not really important. I know that they wouldn't necessarily come off at that slope. This is just for uh, purposes of illustration. So we take x3 and we're getting closer and closer and closer. We can continue this out to x4, x5, x, you know, all, as much as you want, all the way to an, an infinite uh, series of x values to get infinitely close to it, but you can never get perfectly there. So that is the basis of Newton's method. Now there's one little problem is that it doesn't always work and there are some failures of Newton's method. And one potential failure is, let's say here is just a basic graph of a function. The function itself uh, is not important, so this is just what's called f of x. And our function runs oh, it's something like this. And what if this value right here, this is x equals 2, okay? And what if we're saying, take, use Newton's method to approximate the value of this point on the, of, of a certain point on the function, like right here, using x1, which is the first value of x that we plug in, of x1 equals 2. Well, okay, fine, let's do that. We go in, we take f prime of this point right here, we're taking f prime of x equals 2, and what do we get? Well, we get a tangent line, but the tangent line is completely horizontal because at this point, this is the point, the graph, this is uh, where the graph is changing direction. And so since it's changing direction, the derivative is zero and it's useless. So 
this is where Newton's method will fail. If, you, if your x1 is successful, and your x2 is successful, and your x3 is successful, and you're getting closer and closer and closer to your point, you will most likely end up getting really close to your point. Another potential area of failure is you cannot assume that just because x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 were acceptable values and did not give you horizontal tangent lines, that they will not um, eventually fail. You can eventually have, you know, x17 might fail because your function could look something like this. Uh, let's say... Right? Let's say it's like a, this is almost like a trig function, right? And so x1 is, five, this is our x1 right here, and we can take a derivative. This is our x2, but say uh, dot, 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 we get to x6, and it's right here. x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, they all work, but x6 has a horizontal tangent line where the derivative equals zero. So that's our basic overview of the usefulness of Newton's method, what it does, and uh, two areas in which it can fail, and a graphical representation of it. We will get into some problems using it in just a few minutes.